Welcome to the season of Advent. This Sunday is the first Sunday of the church calendar, which is also the first Sunday of Advent. Advent simply refers to a coming presence, whether it's the advent of a new business policy or the advent of a new store on Main Street. In the church year, Advent is the season in which we turn our attention to the coming of Christ and Christ's kingdom. We remember when Christ came as a fully human, vulnerable baby at Bethlehem, God incarnate. We look forward to the day of the Lord when Christ will come again in power and glory. And we look around us to see where Jesus and Christ's kingdom is breaking through right now in our present day. Although we're all eager to get right to our focus on the world's most famous birth, our lectionary instead turns our gaze to that apocalyptic end of the world scenario known as the Day of the Lord. Frankly, I don't think much about what some call Jesus' second coming. But as we saw in the last few weeks, it is a topic given quite a bit of attention and focus by both Jesus and Paul. And that focus can certainly be seen as an extension of a similar focus in the Old Testament. Matthew devoted two entire chapters to what Jesus had to say on this topic. So clearly, it was an important topic in their day. But why? Jesus knew that his physical absence would create a sense of anxiousness to get him back. Paul knew that the church was concerned that Jesus hadn't immediately reappeared. So they both worked, Paul and Jesus, they both worked to reassure the church that he would come back and that those who died before Jesus returned weren't going to miss out on that great event. But why is the second advent the day of the Lord? Why is it important to the church today? The day of the Lord throughout the Bible is seen both as a day of rescue and a day of judgment. If I understand the first verses of Mark 13 correctly, the bad things in the world will get worse. Jesus calls the days in the generation of his return, quote, those days following that distress, unquote. He calls them days of wars, earthquakes, famines, religious persecution family and community division. Things will get so bad that if they continued indefinitely, quote, no one would survive, unquote. In the Old Testament, there are many psalms of lament and prayers for deliverance from Israel's enemies. As we turn the page to the New Testament, all the world joins with Israel in prayer for God to come and deliver us. But in both Testaments, when God comes to deliver us, he also comes in judgment. God alone will judge. Humans are forbidden from presuming this function that rightfully belongs to God. I don't decide who's in and who's out. You don't decide. God decides. He will, as we saw last week, send his angels to separate the sheep and the goats, that is, those who are already living life in the kingdom of God from those who are already devoid of the life of the kingdom of God. And you may remember, <laughs> some folks on both sides are going to be surprised, asking, when did we do that? On that day, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, that prayer's answer will be fully realized. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Honestly, I can't tell you whether you're a sheep or a goat. The Bible says that we are saved by faith alone through grace alone, that there is no other way to God than through Christ, and that Christ in us is God's love acting through us for all those in need in the world. Faith that saves is faith that transforms. But those changes won't be complete until we see Christ face to face. 
So don't go freaking out that you're not perfect. Don't worry. You're not going to miss the second coming either. Jesus is going to appear in the sky with great power and with his majesty and magnificence shining out from him in glorious brilliance. All of his elect on earth and in heaven will be gathered for that great day. But Jesus said that even he didn't have a date for when that would happen. I have a countdown to Christmas widget on my phone but not a countdown to the second coming. It isn't even on the phone of Jesus and the angels. We are simply told to always be ready. Not that we don't take care of our daily business and instead just stand outside in the yard staring into the sky, waiting. Jesus says that standing watch is a team event. It is, quote, like a man going away. He leaves his house, and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch." Unquote. We the church stand watch, stand ready, by living out the kingdom of God's truth and love as a household of God's servant people, a team, a family. I treasure that truth that God's kingdom will come in its glory where it has already come in the myriad of small, often unnoticed, even by ourselves, acts of mercy and love that are true to the heart of our Lord. Come, O come, Emmanuel, the God who is already with us.